Hey, good day to you. What's up? We are hiking, trekking, traveling around the mountains of Abruzzo because we live in the city of Chieti. There is a very good university here, I should say, and I have also a very nice group here. I am proud to be a part of this group. And we go each Saturday, each Sunday to the mountains here. There are beautiful mountain uh, chains. Maiella, Gran Sasso, it's the highest mountain chain in Italy. And uh, Sirente Velino. Sirente Velino is the mountain chain that you can uh, see behind me right now. Uh, welcome to our channel. This is what I wanted to tell you. After watching this video, do not forget to subscribe to our channel, to hit the bell button and thumbs up. Um, leave your comments, also watch our other videos on the series here in Italy. I should tell you, when in my childhood in Russia, I always thought that these beautiful castles, fortified villages you can find nowadays in Austria or in Germany. And it is not true, you know, I have traveled a lot in these countries. Countries are heavily industrialized. And I should tell you, the most authentic medieval towns, medieval castles are situated in Italy and mainly here in Abruzzo. The north of Italy is quite industrialized. You know, Milano, Firenze, yes, in Florence or in Bologna you can see nice architecture of the 18th, 19th centuries. But this architecture you can also find in German towns, in France, I guess in Spain. Um, the south of Italy is much more interesting uh, from the historical perspective, because you can see here the architecture uh, typical to Normans, to um, Muslims, because some of these uh, parts were conquered by the Saracens. Um, generally, all these parts of the former Kingdom of Two Sicilies, also known as uh, Kingdom of Naples, all its parts are very interesting from the historical point of view. But the southern Italy nowadays is a little bit more poor than the northern part. In some parts there are no trains anymore, there are no buses, people prefer to go by cars. We are traveling without a car. So for us Abruzzo is the best region to enjoy ourselves. We can go by bus or by train for a one-day hikes, one-day trekking trips. We go out at 7 at 8 and we return at 7 or 8 or 9 in the evening. And we can visit these beautiful mountains, these beautiful authentic fortified villages and towns. So I recommend to you come here, come to Abruzzo. This is the tower. Uh, the watchtower of the castle that is now destroyed, the castle of Rocca Preturo. The height of this tower is around 22 meters. And to the part we can see, uh, the um, side we can see the Borgo, the fortified village of Rocca Preturo. Uh, its population nowadays is around 200 uh, inhabitants. Uh, it is a very nice little village, however, all population is quite old. There are no youth here because there are no places to work. Uh, today we have done a very interesting trip, from uh, a circle trip. We have started from Rocca Preturo, we have climbed the mountain of Ferma, the uh, this level or the difference of the altitudes that we have uh, walked today was around five, six hundred meters. And when we reached the very top of the mountain of Ferma, we have visited the church of San Terasmo. And from there we have done a short walk along the mountain top towards the church Madonnina della Valle. And now we are going down to the town of Rocca Preturo. Uh, Rocca Preturo nowadays is a part of the comune of Acciano. Uh, the valley in which it is situated, the valley that you can see behind, uh, it's called the Valley of Aterno. This river 
starts uh, near the city of Lakvila and goes along this valley till the mount uh, till the river Pescara. Pescara, long time ago, I guess in the 17th, 18th centuries, it was called Aterno, not Pescara. Aterno nowadays is considered one of the cleanest rivers in Italy and uh, maybe in Europe, I guess. Uh, the, uh, this river is known for its um, mills. There are a lot of Roman mills. Um, uh, one mill near the town of Acciano it was recently reconstructed uh, with the funds of UNESCO, but this uh, mill was working till the year 1960. So just think how well the Romans uh, planned and built the uh, mills that it worked till the uh, 20th century. Also, this valley is very known for its castles. There are castles of Acciano, Befi, Rocca Preturo, Succiano, Pedicciano, uh, Villa San Lorenzo, etc. We have visited basically all of these uh, fortified villages and castles, uh, and we plan to revisit them again. All these castles are very authentic when you are uh, in this uh, Borgo, in this fortified village, it seems that you have gone back in time to the medieval times. Um, uh, this uh, valley is absolutely depopulated. Uh, so long time ago, all these uh, slopes of Sirente, this high mountain behind me that you can see with the snowy top, these mountains, Aquaro, Fermo, they were all gardens or the pastures of, uh, for cows and for sheep. Nowadays, you cannot meet anybody in these mountains. Uh, last March, we have made a, an interesting trip from Rocca Preturo to Navelli. We were going, I guess, for nine hours, and we have not met a single person. So, uh, these castles are very beautiful. And another interesting thing that you have here is a beautiful panorama on the uh, mountain Sirente. Look, uh, the uh, snow already uh, has appeared on its top and on its slopes. Yesterday we have done a beautiful walk up there. Uh, we have visited the uh, depopulated, desolated uh, village of Pagliare di Tione, you know, a village full of empty houses where you cannot find a single person, a single car. Just imagine how pure the air is in these parts. This is the beautiful mountain of Sirente. You can see the top of it is covered with snow. Yesterday we have done a very nice trip to the village uh, desolated village of Pagliare di Tione. The temperature yesterday was around 4 degrees Celsius, uh, but it was a very pleasant trip. Today we are on another mountain that is much lower than Sirente. The uh, altitude here is around 1300-1400 meters. Uh, Sirente is much higher, around two and a half kilometers. Uh, this is the castle of Rocca Preturo that you can see. Yula, please shift again the camera to this beautiful castle. We can see the beautiful pentagonal watchtower of this castle, uh, almost or a little bit above than 20 meters. It's possible to visit this tower, however, uh, you need to go along a very, uh, um, a very steep slope. Uh, that is quite slippery. So, uh, and the video of this tower from this side of the canyon is much better, on my opinion. This castle, as all other castles in this zone, were, was constructed by Normans in the 11th centuries. Uh, the historians say that uh, under this castle there was an ancient oppido. Oppido is an ancient stone castle in pre-Roman times that was usually constructed by the neighboring villagers in order to use it for its own 
uh, or for the defense of the local population during the time of war. By the way, uh, yes, this castle is very beautiful. From one side, from the upper side, there is no wall. Why? Because from uh, it's so steep there that I guess just one archer is uh, enough to defend the whole uh, uh, top part of this castle. So below, uh, so the form of this castle is a triangle. The uh, uh, the angle that is the highest is the most is the weakest point of its defense. By the way, guys. I always was wondering what for used to build a uh, what for to build a castle. I always was thinking if I would be a, um, a suzerain of some uh, locality, a prince, a prince, a local prince, a local earl in the medieval uh, Italy, I would never spend my money on building a castle. In my opinion, it's better to pay to the people to have some troop of the um, warriors who can. Uh, on one hand, defend your uh, population. On the other hand, they can help you in taxation of local people. Uh, while this castle, of course, it cannot defend the local population from a big army. And indeed, when Braccio da Montone, a famous condottiere, during the War of L'Aquila has come to these parts, he has taken this castle and the other castles like this like in two, three days, because his army was, I guess, around five, six thousand people. So these castles, and only recently I was reading an interesting book by some Russian historian about medieval times, and uh, they were speaking about the castles in Caucasus. So Caucasus, Chechnya, Dagestan, these parts are quite dangerous nowadays, but there are fortified villages that are very similar to these villages. Uh, so because these parts there, they were also very rich in times when there was a Silk Road, you know, in the times of uh, pre-Mongol times, Mongol times, times of Tamerlan. Uh, afterwards, uh, Chechenia and Dagestan very quickly shifted away from the main merchant routes and all these castles, towns there, they have frozen in time in the same manner as the uh, towns here in Abruzzo. So when you go to Caucasus, you can see these uh, castles in almost undamaged form. Of course, in Abruzzo, it, I guess it's better because there were several wars here. There were no wars, basically. The Second World War here Mm, was not very hard for the local population. So, and in this book that I read, uh, they said that the castles were built to protect one community from the neighboring communities. So, from the neighbors. Uh, let's say from a raiding party of, say, maximum 100, 200 people. That's why the castles were built. So, they were built either to protect the taxation and the local lord from the population that can rebel and that can uh, try to take the uh, money back, or from the neighboring earls or neighboring communities, or from some rogue, uh, rogue warriors, but always of a number less than 100, 200. If the uh, army is uh, bigger, has a number higher than that, then you can take this castle, you know, guys, like that. Because the walls, I, I, I do not know, five, six meters high. But uh, just think, the contingent of this uh, castle cannot be very high. I guess uh, because uh, the food supply is limited, the water supply is limited, uh, there, uh, there, uh, there are there is some water supply because it's on a slope of a high mountain. So of course there are some underground wells in this castle that are already that were not found. We can only expect them to find there. But in any case, my idea today for you is that these castles were built to defend the local population from its neighbors or the local prince from his own population. They were never used successfully against a grand, great invasion of some army with a high number of combatants. Thank you for watching this video. 
It was a pleasure to make this video to you and it was a pleasure to travel here in the mountains of Abruzzo. Hi.